Hey guys, welcome to Critical Beauty Salon. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Click the subscribe button and the bell icon below to receive instant notification for the next video. Today, I'd like to do a quick recap and review of the Miss Earth USA 2022 pageant, which took place at the Linda Chapin Theater at the Orange County Convention Center in Orlando, Florida last January 8th in conjunction with two other pageants, Team Miss Earth USA 2022 and Mrs. Earth USA 2022. All three pageants are run by the Miss Earth USA organization directed by Laura Clark. 51 contestants competed in this year's Miss Division. Compared to past pageants where some contestants wore sashes that represented regions, sometimes randomly, it was nice to see all contestants this year representing all 50 states plus the District of Columbia. The show began with a video of the three outgoing title holders wearing a swimsuit in animal print and a green cocktail dress provided by the sponsor as they pose and sashay outside the Rosen Center Hotel where the contestants were staying. The camera then takes us inside a theater and we see Marissa Page Butler, the outgoing Miss Earth USA, sashay onto the stage, followed by all 51 Miss contestants that included a young woman in a wheelchair named Madeline Delp, representing South Dakota. After a brief introductory dance number, the contestants positioned themselves on split elevated platforms while a female voiceover read the names of each contestant while a headshot of the contestant flashed on a big screen in the middle of the stage. I really wish the contestants introduced themselves instead of just standing there for four minutes while the female voiceover yelled out their names and states. I mean, two minutes into the intros, I found myself getting irritated by the voiceover's high-pitched voice. New York, Marisa Delgado. The show was hosted by Brittany Ann Payne, who was Miss Earth USA 2015. She read the names of the top 20 semifinalists in random order. A note about Madeline Dell, the disabled contestant from South Dakota. I wasn't quite sure how to evaluate her performance because she was in a wheelchair or she was competing with others who could walk. If the pageant was strictly for disabled contestants in a wheelchair, then it would be easier for me to judge her fairly, and I would definitely give her high marks, not only for a beautiful face, but also for her remarkable wheelchair poses. But let's be honest, you can't judge a disabled contestant in the same way as you judge an able contestant and vice versa without making either one feel inadequate. After the runway competition, the top 12 semi-finalists were announced. This was followed by the presentation of eco videos of selected contestants promoting their causes. The top 12 swimsuit competition came next, where the contestants wore sponsored pink swimsuit of their choice. In this segment, I like Colorado, District of Columbia, and North Carolina. About Pennsylvania, I found her walk a bit stiff and jerky, and she walked in a slightly slanted angle instead of erect. After the swimsuit competition, Brittany read off the names of every sponsor. This took about five minutes, and one minute into the reading, I actually started getting bored. The evening gown competition followed, and in this segment, the girls that stood out for me were Colorado, District of Columbia, Oregon, and South Dakota, wearing a beautiful white ruffled gown. I wish all 12 finalists had lined up on stage so the judges could have taken a last look at each of them before the next elimination round. The outgoing Elemental Queens gave their pre-recorded farewell speech 
in which they summarized the environmental project that they have accomplished during their reign. This was followed by Brittany announcing the top five, each of whom had to elaborate on a specific word given to them. All top five finalists spoke well and sounded sincere with their respective answers. But when it came to Pennsylvania's turn, she was asked to elaborate on the word leadership. For a second, her nerves got the worst of her as she stammered in her response, but she quickly recovered and her answer turned into a mini speech. Pennsylvania, your word is leadership. Leadership. Everyone needs a leader, a mentor, a mentee. <laughs> leadership is what makes the world continue. With good leaders comes changes, and changes just bring so just bring a better world to all of us. Leadership will help us combat, fight climate change to make. I'm so sorry. Leadership. <laughs> leadership is something for me that I strive to do every day and to be a leader to everyone that I meet. With Squad Limitless, my community organization, I push every single person out there to be the best person that they could be, to be confident in themselves, and to go out and make the changes that they want to see in the world. Because without the leaders and pushing those kids and pushing everyone that we see every day to be better, we, where will we be? Nowhere. So with good leaders comes great changes, and I'm ready to be that kind of person. This segment was followed by a video showing the contestants picking up trash, followed by a video of Marissa Butler doing a catwalk in the desert and a look at her rain. Then the camera zooms to Marissa giving her final speech and walk on stage. She looked radiant and stunning and I like that her mother came up on stage to hand her a bouquet of flowers. Before the new Miss Earth USA was announced, Brittany read the winners of special awards for non-finalists and finalists. When the moment to announce the official results arrived, they came out like this. Your Miss Earth Eco, Oklahoma. Your Miss Earth Fire, North Carolina. Your Miss Earth Water, Connecticut. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. The next name I will announce will be your Miss Earth Air and then the new Miss Earth USA, who will be representing the United States of America at the international competition at the end of this year. If for any reason your Miss Earth USA cannot fulfill her duties, Miss Earth USA Air will take her place. Your Miss Earth USA Air is District of Columbia, meaning your new Miss Earth USA, Pennsylvania.
I like that the first runner-up, Miss Earth Air USA, was announced first because this gave her a crowning moment that she deserved. I really thought that Faith Porter of District of Columbia had it in the bag after a superlative performance, but I guess the majority of the judges seemed to favor Pennsylvania over her. I hope Faith competes in the Miss USA system because her performance is actually Miss Universe caliber. I applaud plus size contestant Emma Loney of Oklahoma for competing for the fifth time and finally winning one of the titles. She has definitely one of the most beautiful faces in the competition. But I doubt if Miss Earth is ready to crown a plus size winner. The stage is nothing extraordinary, although it provided adequate space for the contestants to move around without bumping against each other. The decor was simplistic and generic. It consisted of several panels that flashed the names of the states, virtual outdoor scenes, and the Miss Earth USA logo. I thought the choice of music could have been better and more updated, especially during the evening gown competition, when they used a 2015 hit song, Lean On, by Major Lazer and DJ Snake. When I analyze a pageant show, one of the factors that I consider is its entertainment value. I didn't see any of that in Miss Earth USA 2022 finals. It would have been nice to see a performer entertain the audience while the judges were deliberating or serenade the top 12 during the evening gown competition. The structure of the show was solid, which allowed for a smooth progression of the show. The lighting on stage was decent, but the lighting in the audience section was poor as you could hardly see the faces of the attendees. It was great to see a mixed sex judging panel that included two men and four women, and I hope they keep it this way instead of an all women jury. Otherwise, the pageant would be betraying its philosophy of diversity and inclusion, right? But I think the most surprising of all was the fact that none of the four Miss Earth title holders, except for Nelly Spimentel, who attended the show, was mentioned or appeared on the stage, like the new Miss Earth from Belize, Destiny Wagner, Miss Earth 2020, Lindsay Coffey, and Miss Earth 2016, Catherine Espine. I think the show failed to promote the Miss Earth brand by not featuring the three other Miss Earth title holders. Overall, from a scale of one to 10, I would give the show a five because it needs plenty of room for improvement. Next year, I'd like to see some entertainment, a male co-host, I mean, as much as I like Brittany, her voice dominates the entire show and you can only take so much of it. I would also like to see a better stage designed and more current background music with a swimsuit and eating gown competition. As for the winner, Natalia Salmon, she needs to train herself to walk straight wise and not slant wise and to try to be more relaxed and less stiff as possible. Other than that, I think she will make an outstanding representative of the United States in the next edition of Miss Earth, which I hope will not be virtual. And there you have it, my recap and review of the Miss Earth USA 2022 finals. Do you agree or disagree? Comment below. Thank you for watching, guys. Until the next time, bye.